I'm here with J Joshua Coleman. Uh, you guys have probably seen him. He's been all over in the fight uh, against Big Pharma and the fight for medical freedom. And really, it's an honor to be here with you and thank you for everything you're doing in the fight. I mean, you're, you're not just fighting for your son, you're fighting really for all of us. I'm a father myself and I wish I could do more, honestly. And um, it's hard to keep up with all of the legislation. It's hard to keep up with the regular laws that California and the country is passing on a regular basis. And the legislature, it seems like they're, they rate their success in how many bills, new bills and laws and measures they pass each year. And so for parents, it's become really complicated. Um, and and they, I think they just, you know, want to get their kids in school and want to do what they feel is right. And right now, uh, doing the right thing for your child might not be um, the, the right thing, uh, might not be getting these shots and, and really might be breaking the law. And so you're kind of in a weird situation or uh, a predicament. So if you could just share your, a little bit about, you know, why you're in the fight and, uh, you know, what's happened over the last year since the big uh, protests in Sacramento and what's coming up. Well, well, the reason why I'm in this fight is because, you know, my son Otto is 17 months old. He had a vaccine injury called transverse myelitis. It's an autoimmune disorder. So he's he's paralyzed from the waist down. And uh, that's when I, my eyes kind of opened, opened up to vaccine injury. Now, I knew that there could be some complications, but I, I never knew something like paralysis could happen and a whole laundry list of different things. And, uh, and that's when I started, you know, to realize how uh, sort of AWOL this whole program has gone, you know, since I was a child. You know, I was, you know, in my day we were getting 24 vaccines. Right now it's something like either 72, 74 vaccines. Uh, so, you know, it just seems like it's uh, kind of jumped the shark a bit. And I think people need to be safe. People need to be aware of what's going on. And really, I was kind of happy doing my own thing for a very long time after his injury. But when the mandate started to come through with SB 277, at that point I realized I had to get involved, I had to say something, and I had to fight against any kind of mandate like that. And, uh, and unfortunately, we lost SB 277 last year, but there are all kinds of new mandates coming around the corner, and, and as far as we're still working on SB 277, and of course, uh, you know, trying to inform people so that people know what they're getting into, because like I said, I think a lot of people think it's business as usual. It's the same thing when I got, you know, as a child, but it is not. It's completely different. Right, yeah, the vaccines have changed now. Uh, you know, there's 60, 70 shots by, the, by you know, the age of 13, 14. What's, what's the number now? I'm not sure by 13, 14. By the, the 0 to 18, you're looking at about 72 or 74. Gosh, that's but just amazing. At 17 months old, I just looked this up. He had 37 vaccines at 17 months old. You know, I think, you know, in my age, we were supposed to get a, a 24. I think I only got maybe 18. He had 37 at 17 months old. It's it's really insane, you know, and, and he doesn't have enough vaccines in him to go to school right now, which is really unfathomable to me. And a lot of the people that speak this hate talk, people in the media, they haven't gotten 37 vaccines. And yet they're going to call my son unvaccinated and know he shouldn't go to school. It's it's really uh, it's really confusing, and, and a lot of the people that speak hate about this really don't know what they're talking about. You're right. Yeah, no, uh, the people that are informed about it, I've found, are the ones that are most against it. Unless uh, they're, you know, even even the doctors are really a lot of times not informed. Or as soon as I challenge them, when, you know, in, my, in the case of me not getting my shots or whatever. Um, actually, a personal story that happened just recently. My son, um, we took him to the hospital, and, and the, the nurse was checking him. He just uh, had like uh, had a little uh, injury or whatever from running around the house, and they asked if he had all his shots, and I, um, or if he was up to date on his shots, and, and his mother said no. And they asked if he had gotten any of his shots, and uh, she said no. He hasn't been vaccinated at all. And he's perfectly healthy, by the way. I'm sure. And, but they were constantly, the nurse and the doctor were exclaiming how healthy and how uh, well-behaved my son was. Right. And I just kept my mouth shut, but 
the whole time I was thinking, it's so interesting uh, that they noted that he's not vaccinated, but and then at the same time acknowledged that he was the best patient they had all day, so well behaved, so healthy. Right. And so I think there's a disconnect there. And if uh, you know people look at children like my son and other children who are children of p people that were either vaccine injured themselves or had other children that were vaccine injured and decided not to do that with their next child, I think they'll see that um, you know vac not being unvaccinated doesn't mean you're unhealthy and, uh, and or a danger to the, the society or something. Yeah, you know, I know a couple Mormon families. There's a lot of Mormons, uh, you know, in Northern California where I am. I know a couple of Mormon families, and of course they have big families. They have a lot of kids. And both of these two families, I've heard the same uh, the same thing, where they said, we vaccinated our first few kids, we didn't vaccinate the last few. The ones that we didn't vaccinate are the healthiest of the bunch, and even when they do get sick, they get over it quickly. Uh, you know, and, 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 and I read a lot about that online as well. Uh, yeah, and another uh, community that I believe doesn't vaccinate is like Quakers. Right. Uh, they don't vaccinate. And and I think if we did, if we were able to do studies between unvaccinated, legitimately unvaccinated people and people that are vaccinated, you would see a huge difference in uh, their immune system health, their ability to combat, uh, you know, everyday diseases. Because really, do you want? Would you rather have a, di a virus injected into your bloodstream, or would you rather be exposed to it through your mucous membranes in way in a normal, natural way that a, a virus would be, uh, you know? Uh, introduced to your system and I, I think most people would agree that you know being injected is, a, is, is more dangerous it is and you know and people people like to compare these things you know when, when we complain about aluminum when we complain about mercury in the vaccines you know they'll say oh you eat mercury all the time or you're you're eating aluminum all the time but but there are natural filters within the body and the absorption is different and you can excrete it whereas you know when you inject something you know we're talking about an entry here it's, it's pure absorption, you know, it's, it's a completely different thing, you know, and, and that's also not taking into account like the synergistic effects of, you know, aluminum and thimerosal together. Uh, you know, it's so very much more complex than, uh, you know, like if you are reading something in the mainstream media where they try to dumb it down to a seatbelt or a helmet or eating fish, and it certainly is not that simple. Right, yeah, exactly. Eating fish, you're eating it, it's going through your gut. You're not injecting the fish mercury into your blood. So a little bit of a difference there. Uh, and I, I think comparing apples and oranges and, and the kind of ad hominem uh, responses that you know we're getting from the very uh, you know, bought and paid for medical or pharmaceutical industry representatives. I mean, these are lobbyists. They're people that are, go that are being uh, courted almost like a bride to the, med the pharmaceutical industry, right? They're not independent research. You know, do, do we have any independent scientists anymore? How would you have one? I, I can barely come out here and do video and cover this story independently because it's so expensive just to operate. And those tests are very expensive. Right, so how is a doctor, how can you expect the, there to be a uh, independent study on a, phar on a pharmaceutical um, you know, if, if the, all the research money is paid for by, uh, you know, groups that are associated with Merck and, and, right. and Bayer. And so I think there needs to be a real fundamental change in our education system, our institutions, and uh, our science. Right. And, you know, I love the Brandy Vaughn story, the, the Biox story. You know, she used to sell Biox, and this was uh, sold by Merck. And uh, this was a, it was a, I believe it was a, I forget what kind of medication it was. Uh, but it, uh, they did the research, the safety research, they saw that it was dangerous, they buried the data, they released it anyways, and there are at least 50,000 deaths that happened as a result. Now, they were fined, I think, $2 billion or $3 billion, huge lawsuit. But, you know, this is what we're talking about. People will call us conspiracy theorists, you know, like, like, like a pharmaceutical company wouldn't do this. They do this. It's not conspiracy theory. In fact, I've looked at the top six pharmaceutical companies that sell vaccines, and they've all been convicted of this kind of fraud. So, you know, doing the safety data, data understanding that it's dangerous, and releasing it anyways. So, this is something that happens. It's it's not conspiracy theory. It's business as usual. Yeah, no, that that whole term conspiracy theory. People really need to check that. Uh, you know, verbiage and kind of find out where it's coming from. It's just a 
way to, uh, you know, take away from the fact that we need to have a, a debate here. Right. So let's not talk about what people are or, you know, that's, it's, it's like racism. It's like saying you're one of them. We're not going to listen to what you have to say. Right. No, uh, you know, you need to, you need to do the research. You need to go out there and, and listen to these different voices. And when somebody tells you don't listen to them because they're this or don't listen to them because they come from this place, you know, that's not a legitimate response. And so we need to uh, really consider the source and uh, when it comes to our information and, and, and consider it based on, you know, motive, intent, and capability. You know, in, in uh, cr criminal criminology, they talk about motive, intent, and who has the capability to kind of do that sort of thing. Right. And so when it comes to uh, all these, this rising uh, disease and, uh, you know, like Flint, Michigan, the, you know, water that's polluted, it's so interesting that for so long I told people, hey, filter your water. Don't drink the tap water. Or I'll ask them, hey, do you have, um, you know, filtered water? Is the water at your restaurant filtered? And they kind of look at you like you're weird. But then, then we have this thing in Flint, Michigan, and so clearly I'm not weird because I don't want to drink the dirty municipal water system. If, if a person's educated, you know, it's and, and educates themselves about any of these topics, it's. You will see that it's not such a bizarre thing to, to think is going on. There's something going on with the water. There's something going on with vaccines. There's something going on with GMOs. It's so obvious with uh, with vaccines. There's so many red flags and just all the surface stuff. And that's what I talked about today when I was speaking. Just surface stuff, you know, that, that they got they, they, they lobbied for release of liability. Why does a company need to not be liable for their product? And who's going to feel safe injecting something into their child? that's manufactured by a company that's not liable, you know, for, for the injuries and deaths they cause. You know, it just goes on and on and on. It's just so very obvious that something's afoot. That's a huge red flag. Why would you want to uh, remove any liability, especially when it comes to something that you're going to... And then that, they went a step further, really. They, like you said, jumped the shark. They went from, you know, covering their butt uh, liability-wise, to now they're going to mandate you to take something that they have no liability. It's really crazy. It's like, I mean, I don't even know. There's nothing you can compare it to. It's just so right. crazy. You know, and their, their complaint, I think, is they're saying less people are vaccinating, so we need to force them to do it. Now, now the real solution would be to listen to the complaints of parents if they are vaccinating less, and 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 do what you need to do to encourage them to vaccinate. But the fact of the matter is. They know they can't answer those questions, and if they do answer them, they, you know, less people are going to vaccinate. So, so that's why they say we just have to shove this down their throats because otherwise, there's no other way. Yeah, and they, and I think a, a, a large part of it is that there's a chilling effect going on. They're really, um, they really try to scare people into taking the shots. And, and, and then they're they're pushing it. I mean, the fact that they have to sell it so hard, it's like right. going to a used car salesman, and they're like, this is a great car, this is a great car, buy this car. No, don't look over there, and don't look underneath it. It's like, don't don't read the, the manual. Don't, you know, you don't need a car fax report. Just hop in it and go for a, you know what I mean? Just buy it right now. Right. right. Give us your money. And give us your children. And fear works wonderfully. Yeah, that's, if you don't buy great. this car right now, it's going to be gone. You, know, you better get it. Yeah, yeah. They, they love to say, you know, your children are going to die. And uh, and then also, you know, that whole hate campaign against anybody who makes their own decision and decides not to vaccinate or just to partially vaccinate, as in their kids are going to kill your kids. You know, so it's, 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 it's they want, you know, these other people to be pressured. But, you know, the fact of the matter is someone who's in the know cannot be pressured because when it comes to their child and if they are aware of the dangers, no amount of pressure is going to change their mind. I agree. Well, uh, thank you for the, the time. Can you tell us, you know, what's coming up and tell people, you know, where to go for information and how they can support you and Auto and, and the cause? You know, Age of Autism is a really great site for uh, information. And I'd say, like, right now, the movie Vaxxed is playing, and, and that's really, really huge. It's slowly kind of coming across the country. And, and it's, a, it's a great movie, and I think you really need to, everyone needs to encourage anyone and everyone to come and see this movie whether they're hip to this topic or not it impacts everyone it's relevant and it's just a really well done movie so that's what i'd say great thanks and um where you know there's a screening i think coming up right 
I know it just got added to uh, the, the Bay Area. There's two of the landmark uh, tower theaters that are picking it up. And we're working on Sacramento, hopefully within the next couple weeks. Nothing confirmed yet. What, what do you think about uh, what happened in New York with the uh, Tribeca Film uh, Festival? You know, they were going to premiere it. You know, it was a big deal. And right. They pulled it. Yeah, well, obviously, Robert De Niro was pressured. He is saying that uh, that Jane Rosenthal is saying that it was the filmmakers who uh, said they were going to pull their films. I've heard other stories, but he was pressured. He wanted it to play, and he just came out recently with a lot of support for that movie, for a lot of support for uh, Trace Amounts, and, and that's huge, you know. Um, the Tribeca controversy, is, it's really odd that they would pull a movie. Yeah, movies don't hypnotize people, you know. I can I can watch a movie about a white a white supremacist documentary. I'm not going to become a white supremacist, you know. Uh, movies don't hypnotize you, you know. And they're really, just really afraid of this information being seen. But, you know, in the end, that was great free advertising. And more people know about it than ever before. So, you know, good for us. Yeah, it's like the Streisand effect. The more they try to hide something, the more people are going to want to get out and see it. Right. And I do think Robert De Niro is not a bad guy. I, no. But it's clear that they're they're trying to like keep this information, uh, keep the genie in the bottle here. Right. And, and and that's what should be raising everybody's awareness. You know, in Texas, the kind of pressure that went on there to keep it out of the film festival. It's a movie, you know, like Huckleberry Finn was banned when that came out. You know, a lot of classics, Catcher in the Rye. You know, we look back and we go, wow, these are classics, and why would these ever be banned? And, and we live in the United States of America. Are you kidding me? Somebody shouldn't see a movie? You know, and, and, and I think that's an insult to Americans. You know, they're either saying, you're too dumb to correctly interpret this, this information, so we don't want you to see it at all, even though really the reality is, we don't want you to know this stuff. Yeah, and, and they're not going to be able to hide it. You know, the truth does come out. And it will come out. So, but thank you so much for coming yeah. out today. Thank you for your support. And uh, just God bless you and Otto and uh, protect you guys because you're real. You guys are truly, you know, heroes. They, they, they're always, um, you know, throwing that word around. But I think it's people that really go against the grain and people like you that are you know really making a difference and it's hard to see right now but i think in a, in a couple years five ten years down the road you know the things that we're doing right now coming out here and spreading this this information is really going to have a ripple effect right so it's it, and, and that's why some people they tell you what you do what you say your vote whatever doesn't matter but the the reason why it's hard it, it's hard to see because the what we do now you know, that has an effect that ripples into the future. Right. And, and so our actions, are, while they aren't readily apparent right now, the results of them, it's important that everybody get out there, that you, if you know something, if you know, if you personally are a doctor or whatever, and don't take vaccines, but you're not, you know, putting that information out to your clients or to your patients and letting them know that there are risks associated with them. Maybe you don't have to outright say, you know, you shouldn't get it. Right. But if you if you know something, tell you know share that information with other people. And, it, and maybe there'll be some people that say you're crazy or weird. But um, that you, you might save someone's life. So it's a big deal. Right. It's important. <laughs> He's done. He's, We're done. He's